Fortnite's Halloween celebrations are almost as old as the game itself. It started off as simply a spooky launcher and two classic skins. But now, it's one of the Fortnite yearly calendar's biggest events. What's up guys, I'm Steph Woodburn, and I wanna know if you are a fan of Halloween, because while Halloween might not be important to everyone, the spoofy festive season has become one of the most important parts of the year for Fortnite. Fort Nightmares event is almost as old as the game itself, and in today's video, we're gonna be talking about how it evolved. But first, our question of the day. Where in the world is Keith Allen? Did he sit back and relax too hard? Did he overdose on Bunch of Crunch? Am I secretly him dressed up as me for Halloween? Let me know in the comments below where you think Keith Allen is. Over the years, Fortnite has become an incredibly popular game, and because of that, it's been able to expand quite a bit. But Fortnite wasn't always a game filled with incredible skins and map-destroying events. There was a time when Fortnite was incredibly simple, and there were only defaults playing around on the island. The first Fortnite Mirrors event changed all of that. If you were to start playing Fortnite this year and you wanted to know what the most sought after skin was, would you really expect it to be the simple Skull Trooper Fort Nightmare skin? Well, the original Skull Trooper skin pretty much is the most sought after skin in the game. And that's because it's actually one of the very first Fortnite skins. While it sounds hard to imagine now, the Fort Nightmares update in 2017 was actually the first update to introduce us to the item shop and locker in Fortnite Battle Royale. Before this point, we had never been able to buy or equip skins before. But now all of a sudden, we had the super cool Ghoul Trooper and Skull Trooper skins in the shop that anyone could buy. They may have been simple, but at the time, they were all we had, and they were more than enough. The first Fort Nightmares update was loved for more reasons than just the inclusion of skins, though. This was a major update for Fortnite, introducing things like the leaderboards and fan favorite items like Slurp Juice. This was also the first time that we could earn season levels for rewards, and while there was no battle pass just yet, this update basically laid down the groundwork for what the battle pass would eventually become. Oh, and of course, to top off the spooky feeling, the rocket launcher was updated to become the pumpkin launcher, just to hammer home the fact that this was a time for terror. So sure, the first Fort Nightmares event was a pretty simple affair, but then Fortnite as a whole was pretty simple back then, and the event really did push things forward a whole bunch. You had an item shop for the first time and new features were added to the gameplay as well. But this was just the very first Fort Nightmares, and all it really needed to do was just be popular enough to turn it into a tradition, and that's exactly what happened. By the time Halloween came around once again in 2018, Fortnite had undergone a lot of change, and people were expecting a little bit more this time around. Part of that is probably because Epic Games started teasing that year's Fort Nightmares a little bit in advance of the event actually starting. They released three images on Twitter, each with a different piece of poetry attached to it, and each teasing a different element of the event. There was the Deadfire outfit with the poem, Costumes and Dancing, Partner Up, Be Wise, They Could Be Friendly, or A Ghoul in Disguise. The second image teased the shackled stone and said, Tombstones quake, keep your fingers steady. The circle will close, better be ready. The final image teased the six-shooter weapon and the poem read, Take the shot if you have enough to last. The wind calls out, fill your chambers fast. Year, the Fort Nightmares event was ushered in by actual stuff happening on the Fortnite Island. It was part of the Cube Mystery, which had traveled around the map corrupting areas before eventually merging with Loot Lake and causing the island at the center to rise up and fly around the map, charging up those very same corrupted points. Eventually, after absorbing a whole bunch of energy from these corrupted areas, the cube returned to Loot Lake and made the whole island explode, scattering corrupted cube growths across the island, and this is where Fort Nightmares begins. First of all, the destruction of the Loot Lake Island had drastic effects on the battle bus. The wave of cube energy that was released knocked it straight out of the sky, causing it to crash land. 
This was a way for Epic to thematically bring in the new Fortnite Mares themed battle bus, featuring a brand new look and brand new music. There was also cosmetic changes to areas of the map. Fatal Fields was redecorated and had become a Halloween theme park, while other Halloween props were scattered across the map to increase the spooky feel. But all of that was just the beginning because the real terrifying twist in 2018's Sport Nightmares event was the introduction of those corrupted cube growths, or spawn obelisks, that I mentioned earlier. These strange obelisks could be found all over the map during 2018's Fort Nightmares, though mostly around corrupted areas, and introduced player versus environment combat to Battle Royale for the very first time. The cube monster spawned by the cube fragments appeared in both the standard Fort Nightmares playlist and the Team Terror LTM. There were a bunch of different versions, ranging from fiends to brutes, that would attack both you and your structures. But if you managed to defeat them, then they would drop weapons, items, ammo, and even shields. They weren't the biggest threat, but they could disrupt you while you were healing. To take them out easily, we were granted an altered version of the crossbow, now named the Fiend Hunter crossbow. So the second Fort Nightmares was a much bigger undertaking than the first, and introduced the first player versus environment combat for the Battle Royale mode. There were new skins, the battle bus had gotten a makeover, and certain areas of the island had been updated to have a spooky theme. How could Epic ever hope to outdo all of that? Well, 2019's Fort Nightmares events showed that they still had exactly what it took to blow their past events out of the water. Once again, by the time the third Fort Nightmares event was due to come out, Fortnite as a game had changed a whole lot. We'd just come off the back of the biggest event in Fortnite history, culminating with a brand new map being added to the game. With all the new stuff going on, we were ready for a little bit of tradition, and Fort Nightmares was there to deliver. This time around, the major change was to the island point of interest that sat at the center of the Chapter 2 Season 1 map. It was replaced with a new POI called the Isle of the Storm, a purple and corrupted landscape that looked just like a corrupted area from the second Fort Nightmares event. There were corrupted trees, stones, and craters that had a similar effect to the shockwave grenade. The area also featured the return of obelisks that summoned monsters of the Horde to roam around the island. Elsewhere around the map, there were Halloween decorations going up and a new Halloween store called Hey Boo! which had haunted floating pieces of furniture that could turn into zombies if you got too close. Oh, and of course, as tradition dictates, the pumpkin launcher had returned for Fort Nightmares. That was pretty much it for the main battle royale modes, but it wasn't all Epic had in store for us that Fort Nightmares. This year's spooky fun really existed in the LTMs. Two spooky themed LTMs had been added to the game, Gunfright and Storm King. Gunfight was a new PvP game mode where four players fight in a 2v2 showdown on a creative map. On each round, a random loadout is given with each player getting the same loadout. It was pretty simple, and that's because the main focus was on the Storm King game mode. The Storm King game mode was something completely new for players of Fortnite Battle Royale. The point of the mode wasn't even PvP combat, it was basically a giant raid boss fight against the Storm King himself. In this mode, 15 players would team up together to avoid the Horde, the Storm, and the Storm King's attacks, all while destroying the weak points and the horns to defeat the Storm King itself. It was the craziest addition to Fortnite Battle Royale we have ever seen, and nothing has come close to how different it is to the main mode ever since. Okay guys, we've gone over Fort Nightmares past. Now it's time to take the visit to the present to see how it stacks up against everything that came before. Do 2020's terrifying offerings match what we've been given before, or is it even better? The current season of Fortnite has been a pretty interesting one. It feels like the storyline that was built up with Midas, Ghost, and Shadow had been tossed away by the developers of Fortnite, even if members of their team had said it was all going to be tied together somehow. This year's Fort Nightmares event might be the beginning of how everything gets tied up. This fall, vengeance is a dish best served gold. Midas is revenge. At the beginning of Chapter 2, Season 3, Midas was eaten by a shark, leading us all to believe that he was, in fact, deceased. Well, 2020's Fort Nightmares event is called Midas' Revenge, and it seems him rejoining the world of the living and beginning a vengeful reign of terror on the Apollo Island is the point of this year's event. 
The super big change for this year's Fortnite Mares event is a switch up like Fortnite Battle Royale has never seen before. In solos, duos, and squads, you don't just have one life, you actually have two. If you get eliminated, you can respawn back on the island as one of Midas's army of shadows to get your own revenge on the living. You can team up with other eliminated players to try and get a Nightmare Royale. Shadows had all kinds of powers. Their main attack was a combo of slashes, and to use it, they had to get close. That was completely fine, though, considering they had the ability to phase through objects to avoid gunfire and a massive leap to close the gap. They also had a scream attack that highlighted any nearby living enemies. Oh, and just to top it all off, they could possess the body of vehicles as well. While we were used to using the Fiend Hunter crossbow and the pumpkin-style rocket launcher, two new items were added to the game this time around the witch's broom and the candy bucket. Witch shacks were added all over the island and they had witch's brooms in buckets outside of them. These buckets were basically just reskinned versions of the Silver Surfer surfboard and using them would send you soaring through the air. Once again, Fortnite has changed a lot over the course of the last year. And one of the things we have this year that we didn't last year is Party Royale. The in-game hangout Party Royale Island has been the go-to place to watch music shows and movies this year. So of course, it needed to be included with the spooky fun. Epic Games managed to get the reggaeton global ambassador superstar and four-time Latin Grammy winner J Balvin to perform his Afterlife Party, which is set to be a special performance of Latin culture and hip hop. It's been quite an adventure over the last four years. Just as the game has evolved, so have the events alongside it. What's been your favorite Fortnite Mares year? The simplicity of 2017? The story-focused 2018? 2019 Storm King fight? Or this year's resurrection zombie mechanics? Thanks so much for watching. I'm Steph. We'll see you next time.